What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Yes, it is raining right now. Hopefully it stops pretty soon because we don't have too much daylight left, but this ought to be an interesting video because today we are entering uncharted territory, at least for me, because I just bought a crossbow. So I've shot compound bows quite a bit in my life, but I've never shot a crossbow and I've always wanted to. So hopefully we can figure this thing out together. Now this is just a Barnett XP 400. It's definitely not a high dollar one, but it does have a velocity of about 400 feet per second. And that was my main criteria. I wanted it to at least be on par with the high end ones from a velocity standpoint. So there's one main reason I wanted to get this thing and that is to test its zombie slaying capabilities. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the TV series, Walking Dead, where Daryl used a crossbow and it was basically understood that he was one of, if not the best, at killing zombies. Me and my girlfriend used to watch it back in the day and every time Daryl came on, we knew he was fixing to do work on some zombies. So last week I made a video on the Mare's Leg 44 Magnum and we shot a zombie head from Ballistic Dummy Lab. Well, I'm happy to say we have another one and here it is, the zombie head we're gonna be shooting in today's video. So it's got softer bones, rotting flesh, it's obviously uh, just ballistics gel, but if you're looking to test weapons for the zombie apocalypse, this is probably your best bet. So we'll see what it does to the zombie head here in just a minute, but first, let's shoot this thing and see what it can do. But really quick guys, before we get started, I wanna thank my friends at sportsmansguide.com for supporting the channel. Sportsman's Guide is a website I have used for years because they offer quality products from the brands we all trust, and not just hunting, but everything outdoor related, fishing, camping, hiking, clothing, ATVs, truck accessories, and much more. They also offer a full line of products from one of my favorite scope companies, Vortex. And they have this really cool thing called the Buyer's Club, where if you sign up, you save 10% off most items on the website and 5% off of Freedom Seeds every single day. Plus you get free shipping on any order that's $49 or more. So being a Buyer's Club member uh, definitely has some pretty big perks. Again, that's sportsmansguide.com. Check out the website and I promise you'll thank me later. Now let's go find some zombies. I'll go ahead and give you guys a close up look at this thing. It's actually a pretty good looking crossbow for 400 bucks or whatever I paid for it. I just bought this thing today and I reckon we're already getting it muddy because it is an absolute mud pit out here. Obviously some of them have the hand cranks that help you draw it back. This one, it just has this little rope. So we're gonna have to manually cock it every time we shoot it. The way it works is you put your foot in that big hole right there, wrap your string around the back, put your hooks in down here, and then pull it up into place like that. I tell you what, do not let your foot come out of that hole or you will punch yourself in the gut. I did that earlier today trying to cock it back for the first time. So I've got my bow target sitting on the table about 10 yards away. We're gonna start with this and just see where the scope's at. I don't know if that's rated for a crossbow or not, but I guess we'll find out. And I do have some different tips, but obviously for this one, we're just gonna start with a regular field tip. See what this thing feels like. I'm gonna aim right for the middle. Bullseye. <laughs> well, I guess I don't have to adjust the scope. It looks like it's dead on. Well, I was just filming some slow-mo and I had one come even closer to blowing all the way through the target. So you can see the back end of it sticking out right there. And then on this side, <laughs> it's literally pulling the fabric through that target. I have a feeling that this thing's gonna be pretty well destroyed by the end of this video. So before we test this thing on a real zombie head, I wanna try something really quick. So on the table, I have five bags of all-purpose flour, and I wanna see how many of those bags a crossbow bolt can actually get through. So this is a 100 grain, three blade broadhead, and it looks pretty sweet. Let's try it. You guys can put your guesses in the comments on this one if you want to. Like I said, I am an absolute novice when it comes to crossbows, and I'm not afraid to be a newbie on camera. A lot of guys have to pretend they're experts on everything, I'll gladly look like an idiot in front of the world. So all you crossbow guys, give me some tips in the comments if you want to, but I don't really know what to expect, honestly. Could go through all of them, could go through one of them. Let's find out. I thought it would put up a little more resistance than that. At first I thought I put it too high, but when I looked at it, it was actually a pretty good shot. So obviously in the beginning, it was a little high right there in that black label. And then if you look, the further back we go, I'll take this side, it drops down. And then when it exited the fifth bag, 
it was right in the middle. So pretty much a perfect shot, honestly. Our crossbow bolt is here, <laughs> stuck in the ground. Doesn't look like it did any damage. The arrowhead looks fine and the fletching looks completely undamaged as well. I'm gonna level with you guys. I've had these bags of flour for like six months and I've just really needed to get rid of them and I thought this would be a good video to do it. So <laughs> let's try a zombie head. So obviously like anything, there are advantages and disadvantages to using a crossbow for the zombie apocalypse. The two main advantages I can think of, number one is that it's quiet and it won't attract more zombies. Obviously a firearm is really loud. If you shoot a gun, it's gonna attract more zombies. A crossbow won't do that. And number two, I'm not as sure about, we're gonna find out in this video, is the ability to recover your crossbow bolts after you shoot them. So with a gun, once you shoot a bullet, it's pretty much gone forever. With a crossbow, at least in all the shows I've seen, they go up, pull the crossbow bolt out of the zombie's head and put it back in their quiver and they can use it again. How realistic is that? We're gonna find out. All right guys, it's time for the moment of truth. Is a crossbow really a good choice for the zombie apocalypse? We have our zombie head on the table down there, probably seven to 10 yards away. I think I should be able to hit it. And for this one, we've got a special tip. So this is a three blade, 125 grain crossbow tip. Definitely the nicest looking ones I have and also the most expensive. So it should get the job done. Let's go for it. <laughs> it didn't go all the way through like I thought it would. Well, part of that was my fault because I hit it too low. That was not the result that I was expecting. So obviously I put it below the nose, which is not where I was going at all. Um, we're gonna try it again and I'm gonna see if I can hit him more up here where I was aiming the first time. Well, keep in mind, I don't know diddly squat about crossbows, so I could be wrong, but I wonder if maybe because it's a broadhead, it actually prevented it from blowing all the way through. I don't know, we're gonna try it again and see if I can get it a little bit higher up this time. And we rotated him sideways. Now that one went all the way through. <laughs> yes! I apologize for how windy it is out here, guys. Obviously, there's nothing I can do about it, but here is the aftermath. So you can see the green zombie blood trail that it left all along that table. And obviously, I didn't pull the first one out because I didn't want it to drain, um, but you can see just how much carnage it did. <laughs> Smoked him right in the grill. And then our second one was a perfect hit right where I was aiming. You can see the three blades from that broadhead right where they went in and then I'll try to, oh, there's our first bolt. It looks like it broke and the tip came off in his mouth. I'll go ahead and flip this thing over and there <laughs> is the exit hole. Actually not a ton of damage on the exit hole. It's just a perfect three blade mark, just like the entrance. Obviously he's leaking a little bit of that green zombie blood but I would say that might be a better result because it didn't do a ton of unnecessary damage. It just blew right through and came out the other side. Really, really cool. Now, where's our arrow? I think I see it way up here on the hill. <laughs> there it is, buried into the dirt. There's no fletching. I assume that's the back, yep. And then there is our broadhead covered in dirt, completely undamaged that broadhead looks like it's in perfect shape but the fletching definitely got ripped off i wonder if the fletching is stuck in the zombie head there's really no way to tell how about we shoot him again with a different broadhead and see what it does all right guys we got a brand new crossbow bolt with a terminus 100 so this is a 100 grain broadhead lighter weight than the last one but it's bigger in size and i'm sure we're going to completely destroy this arrow too so a lot of money going into this video. Share it for me, please. <laughs> for this one, I went ahead and turned him backwards so the backside of his head is facing us. It's the only part that's untouched so far. Let's see if we get through. Whoa. Uh, 
That was pretty cool. Well, one of my main advantages for using a crossbow in the zombie apocalypse was that you could recover your arrows and save ammo. Whereas with a gun, you're obviously not gonna get your bullets back. Unless I'm using crappy bolts, uh, that doesn't really seem to be the case. So far, we've destroyed every single one <laughs> that we shot, but that was absolutely awesome. So you can see the backside of that crossbow bolt is still there, sticking out the back of his head. And I believe it exited right through his eyeball, right there. So the majority of it passed through, but the fletchings and the back end stuck right there in the back of his head. And I think I see our bolt right here. So that one actually broke. You can see one of the blades is gone. Um, and then obviously on the back end there, that's where the fletchings ripped off. But I think either one of those would absolutely do the job 100%. The first one was my fault. I put it too low, obviously, right in his grill. Um, but even that, you know, that might do the job. Zombies are already dead, so typically you have to hit them in the brain. Uh, but either way, I wouldn't want to get hit with any of them. That's for sure. Very impressive. Well, while we're at it, why don't we go ahead and try a field tip? So these are the arrows that actually came with the crossbow. Um, kind of pointy, definitely, you know, not harmless but shouldn't be as impressive as the broadheads. Let's see what they do. This one might actually penetrate the best. I'm not really sure. Obviously with bullets, full metal jacket ball rounds tend to penetrate the most because they're not expanding like hollow points are. So let's see if the same thing applies to a crossbow bolt. Straight through. I think he's bleeding a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so that one actually blew straight through. It was kind of high, um, but either way, it went straight in right there. You can see some of the skull damage on our zombie head, and then straight out right there. Not really any collateral damage, just punched right through, kind of what I expected. And then our bolt, is here stuck in the dirt and the fletchings are pretty much fine there's a little tear in that white one and obviously our tip is completely fine as well so maybe in the zombie apocalypse you don't really need maximum damage you just need it to go through the brain and shut the zombie down so the field tips might actually be the best because you could recover it and actually preserve your ammo that way with broadheads they're just you know destroying pretty much everything more damage and more impressive from the broadheads obviously uh, but the field tip did the job and i was also able to recover the bolt something to think about i think our zombie has pretty much had it he's definitely seen better days i'll give you guys another close-up look at him pretty freaking sweet it looks like he lost a tooth zombie teeth don't see that very often well he's losing teeth we got zombie blood coming out of pretty much everywhere and we've used all of our crossbow bolts but i think we answered the question yes the crossbow would absolutely be effective in the zombie apocalypse all right guys that is going to do it for me today thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed this video on the barnett I forget what it's called, crossbow. <laughs> I've wanted a crossbow for a really long time and we're gonna do more videos with it. I've wanted to compare one to a gun for a really long time. Give me some more ideas down in the comments if you would like to see anything uh, with the crossbow. And again, it is absolutely a good choice for the zombie apocalypse. You just have to weigh the pros and cons. You know, what would you rather have? Silent and deadly or loud and also deadly. Personally, I would probably still take a firearm over a crossbow just because I have so much more experience with guns, but if you're well trained and, you know, Daryl with a crossbow, then by all means go for it. It would absolutely get the job done. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please let me know down in the comments below. As always, hit that like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.